What's going on everybody? Rishraf back in with another video. And without further ado, let's get right into it. And how this works is we press this and it says player inserted into table. What's up everybody? As you just saw, that's gonna be the template for our race system or our drag racing system. So to get right into this video, what we need to do is go to the workspace here and make sure we have it selected and at the top do part. So once this inserts a part, our spawn location, in case you guys didn't know what this is, this is a spawn location. Um, there's a lot of properties associated with it, like teams and stuff, but this is where the players are always going to spawn because it's a neutral spawn. So we have our part here, and we'll just name this one start. It just makes it a lot easier, and then we'll insert another part, and we'll call this part finish. You guessed it, finish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just color coat them real quick. So the finish is going to be red and the start is going to be green. So once you have these, you're going to hold down command or control, depending on what uh, system you're on. And you're going to right click the both of them. And then you're going to say group as a model. And then we'll just, you could just name it like drag race system. So this is just the framework. Keep in mind guys, this is the framework for how you would do a drag racing system. I wouldn't exactly call this game ready, but like I said guys, this is gonna be able to help you create a system like this in your game. And the way I'm doing it is via touched. And how you would do this via touch is when the player touches it, it activates already. Once it go ahead and activates the system, both of your players or however many players you have registered for the race will now be subscribed to that event and what's going to happen is is when we click on this and what's going to happen is is when we touch this start part our player is going to be added to the players in the list and what's going to happen is the system is going to recognize how many players are in the list and decide who the first one to touch this finish block is so this is more of a race to finish or capture the flag you could say um, you could put it on this, but this is just the initiation block, right? So once that happens, the first thing you want to do is go into your script. We don't need to do anything else in the workspace anymore. I like to make it a lot easier. In my last video that I uploaded, I just literally spelled everything out for you guys in the thing, but we're going to make some variables now. So we need to do the start. Let's do it start. We'll say start equals script dot parent dot start. If you don't have this, it's wrong off the bat already because you need to have it grouped already and you need to have it auto completing like mine. Press enter here twice and we'll say finish equals script.parent.finish. This should auto complete as well. If it's not auto completing, rewind the video and maybe see if you made a mistake or if you maybe if you missed something. And then we'll say is racing equals false. We'll say has winner equals false. And then we'll also do players required. So, so players required. So this is how many players are required and the cap to start the race. So if there's three of us, players required is two and two people come and hit the start block and the third guy comes along, he is not going to be included because this is the cap on the players that are allowed. This is the exact number. What you could do is if you want a minimum and a maximum, you could have two different values here and you can mess with them in the if statements, but I do recommend you have some Roblox experience before you start doing that. Then we'll say current players and then we'll do the little curly braces here because those indicate that an array, an array is a list. And we'll say local players equals game get service players once we have the players we're gonna drop two lines and now we just need to make our functions so there's only two functions there's actually only three functions here that we're gonna be doing and then that's the whole script so we're gonna say start dot touched this should auto auto complete because it's referencing the about the variable we'll say connect function touched I normally do hit here, but we'll just try touch this time. If touched dot parent is a, and if you guys have watched all my other videos, you know it's the same as always. 
If you haven't watched my other videos yet, feel free to go ahead and watch them. They're super interesting and they have a lot of content for your games. And not only for your games, but just to learn, you know? It's always nice to just learn how everything works. And you want to put two, two equal signs here because you're in a conditional statement. And I made a little spelling error here, so I gotta fix that. And then press enter. If your enter does not include another end automatically, you're doing something wrong. I like to just tell people what they're doing wrong so that way they can go back in the video because I notice, I, I get it. Because when I was first learning off YouTube, I didn't really know how to do it. And that's why I have this channel because there's a lot of overthinking and there's a lot of things that a lot of YouTubers don't cover because a lot of YouTubers aren't gonna cover the little text like, oh, why is there two equal signs here? Or why are we doing is a model? Because every character is a model. You know, like how we grouped it here. Every character is a group of arms, legs, uh, scripts. It becomes a model. So once we do that, we're going to press enter, we're going to say table.insert. So remember how I told you guys we made a table up here for current players? Well, we're going to insert into that table. So the first argument here is the table itself. So we need to do current players. So boom, we're going to insert our player into current players. So now it's going to have the player's name inserted into this array. Last if statement for this function, we'll say if current players. So adding a hashtag before a list name gives you the count. It's like list.count if you do any other languages. And then you can say greater or equal to players required. Then is racing equals true. So this starts the race basically. So is racing, is there currently a race in progress? Yes, there is because current players is now required. You see how that works? So that's that function. So this is how you start the entire race. Now you know how to start an entire race. Well, okay, like a Roblox race. Like don't get ahead of your guys, don't get ahead of yourselves. Like relax. So I better not see any memes about that. So now what we'll do is we'll say finish.touched connect and then you guessed it we'll do that function in here again same same style here we'll do touched just for reference auto complete the end now this is how you would finish the race so now that we already have the race going we need to detect the first player so we'll say if touched dot parent you know we got to do the we got to check if it is a character first we got to check if we actually do have a player so say if we're if we're a model and touched dot parent find first child humanoid because every player has a humanoid component has winner so if we have a winner for the race yet boom right here so if we don't have a winner for the race it's fine and if we are racing in general because we don't want somebody to hit it or hit the block or touch it when we're not even racing and for them to win some sort of prize. But then you're kind of like, whoa, we're chef. What if I start this race? I mean, look at it so far. What if I start this race and then it's going, I mean, look at, there's a flaw. Somebody's gonna come and touch the end part and they're gonna win all the money. Well, that's a great question and that's great. And this is why you should watch this channel because a lot of YouTubers aren't gonna cover these little overthinking and the little what if thoughts, the little intrusive thoughts in the code that tend to eat you guys up sometimes and they tend to you know eat me up sometimes too so what you're gonna do is you're gonna say local player equals players get player from character touch dot parent just like we did above but now we need to check if our player is the one actually touching it so remember these functions only get executed when a player touches the part so if a player just randomly touches a part, we have to do a little for loop here and we have to do do if player. So if our player, so you're probably like, who's our player? Well, the one that just touched it, local player equals touch dot parent. And if our player, if our player here is 
within the current players, and you need to do the index here, Parent, uh, then do then, has winner equals true. So if our player is in one of them, so if our index for that player is inside of here, so I know it's a little confusing the way it's written, and I know there's an error here, I'm gonna take a look at that, but if our player is inside of this list, then all right, we're good to go, we have a winner, print winner, and this is how you combine strings, space, dot, dot, player, dot, name. That way you can print who wins, and then how you would call it a function like this, we're gonna say reset the race. Because once we have a winner, if you want it to keep going, we'll reset the race. But you're like, Rishraf, there's no function called reset race, so let's create one. We'll just do function reset race, and this is, this is something that you wanna do um, for any system that you have, because you wanna make sure that you, you have a clear idea of what the values are. And we'll say current players equals this array, this blank array. And now you'll notice this error is gone here because it's very important here that we reset everything. So for index equals. Yeah, so index equals one, and then we'll start it at one, and then we'll do the current players. And then what we'll do here is we'll say, if we have a player, we'll just print inserted player into table so that way you know we have a general consensus of what is going on so player.name so that's how you make a fully functioning drag racing system and you're like well Rishaf how does this work I'm about to show you guys how it works all right guys so we're gonna go into testing here and how this works is we press this and it says player inserted into table official Rishraf and then we're gonna go back here and if we had another player this would work the same way but start the race, you have to fire the event. And when you want to finish the race, you have to fire an event. And once an event is fired, the event listener then will insert a table of the players. So if you guys wanna know more on how to use events and everything, I have multiple videos on the channel. You'll stumble across one or two, or maybe even three, four, five that have events in them. But this is just a framework. This is just a skeleton of what you guys actually need to know about race systems because they're a lot more they're a lot more complicated than you think so if we can get this video up to 250 likes everybody 250 likes everybody i'll do another racing system that's a little more in depth perhaps using cars perhaps using a menu perhaps using whatever we need to do 250 likes guys to so share the videos with your friends and thank you guys so much for watching the framework for this video and I hope you guys have a magnificent day. Like and subscribe and have a blessed day. Have a good one, everybody.